He was ordered for August 31st. Six by that part. Um, agenda tonight, we have a couple of forums followed by appointments of a firefighter, new business, so the COVID-19 update and related discussions, and discussion of the water rates and related matters, and discussion regarding the perambulation and re-precincting, and then we will have an executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, 21A, Clause 1 and 7 for a personnel discussion. Uh, once we enter that, we will not return back to the public meeting. And we will have all of business, the town administrator's report, and the uh, assistant town administrator. One set of minutes. So, public forum. Anyone here this evening that would like to speak to anything that is not specifically on the agenda tonight? Are you waving or just waiting? In Tapping on a song over there. Okay. Um, uh, I'm good. Okay. okay. All right. So there being none, we will move on to appointments. And that is for a firefighter, ERF, for Allison Rawls. Yeah. I assume the chief here here to speak to this. And Captain Perry here to speak to this as well. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce you to Allison Rawls. Um, Allison's a uh, college student just graduated. She lives here in town over on uh, Bassett Park. And she has an interest uh, first in emergency medical type areas. That's what she's been studying in college. And we think eventually we can convince her to become a firefighter too. So, uh, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it's one for <laughs> Obviously, you know, uh, you know, we really need people that uh, live in town and has that medical background. Matter of fact, Allison just got hired on with Trinity, so uh, she'll be working for them. And we may even see her, you know, during the day when she's working. But uh, do you want to say a few words or come a little bit about your schooling? Oh well, yeah. So this, I guess, this whole firefighting like versus one thing was. I guess unexpected. I just I realized I wanted to do this like my senior year of college, which is last year, because I was really I suppose I was just ignorant of what firefighting is. I didn't really know. I didn't know what they did until um, a friend told me about it. So now I'm super excited. My mom gave me not as much, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean never thought I'd be doing this, especially like in the town I grew up in too. So no, that's great. That's great. I certainly appreciate you. Stepping up to volunteer. And she's she's uh, gone through all the background checks, physicals, and everything. Mm -hmm. Great. From that aspect. Excellent. Make a motion to appoint as Stephen. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome aboard. <laughs> No, we do have one, um, one resignation. Yes, so resignation from James Dow from serving as the plumbing and gas inspector effective September 30th, 2021. Served his position for 40 years. And, um, I'd like to thank the town, all staff. Well, I'm sad to see go. That's he's been great for 40 years. That's, that's a long time. We certainly appreciate all the work that he's done. Retirement on to the big things. So, uh, Jim, I know you're here. You're not here. If, if, if you have a substitute or someone that's willing, he does. Uh, uh, he does. Okay, please. So he has a substitute. I understand that he, he, he wants to transition his students to his assistant. He had an alternate. An, an alternate assistant. Mm -hmm. The alternate teacher full time? He likes it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Let's get her over. Yeah. 
Um, and one more thing regarding appointments. Um, there was a list of appointments that we made a couple of meetings back that had a position listed that uh, we included in that list, and that was for the special firefighter position. Um, that was unintended. So I believe we need to make a motion to rescind that um, appointment. I think that's for firefighter Nicole. We have to rescind his appointment to that list as stated that night. So I make a motion to enact that. Second. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, little housekeeping. And the final instructor will vote for the second for the motion. Do we need to do that? We should do it. Okay. All right, is there a motion to accept the resignation of James Dow from the plumbing and gas inspector position? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so um, there is someone that is controlling in the meantime. So he's had an assistant or an alternate. Okay. That's been working with another here. And that person is interested in taking this. So we can get on the capacity. Is that something that I know we had talked about having an assistant building inspector? Can you couple those together into one role, maybe yeah. more no. broadly speaking? It's hard happen. to do that because the yeah, that license for the specialized. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's very I know it's a tricky industry. Yeah. I'll have to get help. Who's the assistant? This one's John. I don't know. I'm not sure what his last name is. Not a long, long time. Business uh, first discussion under new businesses COVID 19 update and related discussions. We see um, our board of health care joined us. Yeah, where are we at? Um, where are we at? Well, numbers are going up with the Delta variant. There are some great groups of people who are vaccinated. Uh, the state has no mandate the schools. Do you have a rough sense for where our number is? Because I saw a school number that said like 27, but I didn't think that was possible. We've never had that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I see we're probably a 10 right now. We have a small spike on us in the air. Message to the sign to make sure we're about to finish our So now taking that on the start of this again, if it's not that much, so we can do that with a count of whoever can find the music fire. Yeah. And we we continue to follow the protocol anyway. We haven't changed at all. So we're masking up and all precautions. Right? So. Yeah. <clears throat> so
know, hoping to focus people to trusted sources that they had to give them. Um, and I should get a fresh batch for that. Yeah, there's a chart that I got from the PTO or APT parent. They mm -hmm. talk about the 14 day average of daily incidence data over time, which is data is collected by taking a number of positive tests divided by the population denominator, normalized by a rate of 100,000 people to allow for comparisons. Groton's at 11.0 as of 826. We're at 27.8. So I thought that a little hard to believe. So I'm asking for some clarity on that source, but. Well, we're a small town. It doesn't take a lot of people to skew our numbers. But the other thing is, is I just, a lot of people are focused on where is most of it. And who lives and works entirely in Dunstan? The vast majority of the town, including the students, Go to Groton, where parents go to high school, and Groton work in Boston and Western Arlington and everywhere. Uh, and we all go shopping in Nashville. Um, you know, I think we need to look at, you know, people tend to want to focus on our county. It's great to like to focus on our county as well. Look how well we're doing. It's mean that we're being careful, not that we're not at risk. But considering the risk, I want to look at a broad area sure. because we travel in a broad area. Yeah, this was an update that was sent by the school district itself, so I'm not sure it's just a different way of messaging in order to keep people informed and motivate, I hope, to get vaccinations or incentivize or and we're not like the southern states. I mean we, we even in because of the lower vaccinated come on we fairly heavily vaccinated it's not travel. Yeah. Do you have a rough sense for what the population is that's vaccinated? Is it 50%? Is it? It was 60. This was July, so it's not really gone up, right? Sure. I got three. Do I count extra? Um, so. <laughs> 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 um, the, uh, it was 62%, I think, overall. But that includes, like, we were almost 100% of the older people. And it mostly goes down. What's a little disconcerting is the young adults. So this, at the time in July, it had recently been approved for the 12 to 18, so okay. or whatever that you know, middle group is. So I can see that that group wasn't heavily vaccinated. That I can see that being the case. You know, yeah. there, there hadn't been a lot of time. Um, so I, I'm curious, I'll go up and see if I can't get the numbers again and see where we're at. Yeah. Um, and I'm open to ways to message to help people sort of look for other sources for information about vaccination that they might be comfortable with. Yeah. That might help us all and help keep everyone safe. So yeah, it's a creative approach to balancing out people's feelings and health needs. So. Yeah. It's tricky. So was there anything else that we need to cover under this? So the, the two things that uh <clears throat> that mentioned to me are one or anything fit it on that to me as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some people want to be on that <clears throat> attending in person meetings and they're self confined. So uh, if, if members of the public are uncomfortable coming to a meeting because of of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to consider. And then <clears throat> the second thing was we had left town all closed on Fridays uh, when we reopened. Yeah. And uh, we were going to fix that or correct that after the day today because that's still what we want to do. Come back to the day. We opened Friday by appointment only, or is it walk in? As in the past, we've just been open. Okay. Yeah. There's two people that are normally here on Fridays, Jake and Susan. Sure. I mean, we never did the, we never did the five thing. 
Yeah. I guess I'd want to think more about the having whether it be open or closed on Friday. That's a broader discussion because it'd be more efficient for the building and the town to have people here Monday through Thursday, maybe. But the citizens should have the right to get in the building on Friday too. So it's still a normal day of the week. Is it busy on Friday? I'm not here. Okay. Yeah. Has it typically been busy on Is Friday? Pre pandemic? Um, not always. It was sort of a circuit, hit or miss. Um, these days it's gotten more quiet because people are used to it. Most town halls are open either only a half day or they're closed on Fridays because it's efficient. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually a little bit of an outlier of having a full day. Yeah. On Fridays, because a lot of town halls really do close after noon. Uh, but because I'm here till five, we're generally open the whole time. So it'll probably be quiet when we first reopen if we reopen on Fridays until people figure out we're here again. Um, so for most of the things that people would come in for on a Friday, uh, is there something that they could normally do online? If, what, did you find would be the most common thing would be people trying to get permits that is now done online now? Or? Um, usually it was things like tax payments. So they're coming in to see the tax collector, but they can do that online in most instances, or they can leave payments either through the slot door or they can mail them. Uh, a lot of people have switched online yeah. even more since the pandemic when it comes to tax payments. Uh, permitting happens, but not as great frequency on Fridays because the vast majority of inspections or permits departments, at least based on what contractors have told me, are usually open on Fridays or they're only open in the mornings. Right. So a lot of contractors in the past have been surprised that we were available on Fridays. Most of the times I have been associated with, with my job are typically closed or closing on Fridays. I'd be curious to learn if that would help us with some efficiencies. To not, to not have people to have it just be closed on Friday, mm -hmm. mail slot open for any tax payments that do when we made in person. Yeah. What efficiency to not have the building running, heating, cooling, yeah. and staff wise, I don't know. Uh, if, 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 if the town is fully in, I'm sorry. Does everybody have a key? What's that? If the town hall staff needs to come on a Friday to do something, yes. Do they all have keys? Yes. So there's no issue with someone needs to come in because they've got a project. Yes. Some do anyway. Yeah. 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 There are some that come up even when it's been closed. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the position was we're just closed, and if you need to come into the work, that happens. Yeah. So I, my own self, I don't, and I've been here Fridays for. See people banging on the door and saying, Cars, cars, I just don't. Yeah. And so I'm not against keeping it closed on Fridays. I think, given the fact we've got 4,400 cases showing up every day, it's, in my opinion, if they all have keys, we can come to work, we're not impacting, um, I would be in support of remaining that closure Friday. My only ask is that that information get communicated effectively by something on the door of town hall and something on the website. Because there was only one time that I remember somebody came up trying to do all that. And it couldn't get in the original time. There were no hours there. And the guy was like, I said, hopefully I'm closed. He said, it's closed. So I would just ask that if we're going to do this as a board, that we just communicate that information. Thank you. We can revisit again in a couple months. Yeah, we have to do a, a fuller analysis of what are the benefits of that. Is and I think for the most part, Jay, because I do go in and out of a lot of town halls for 2024. Yeah, I mean, right in town halls, plus all day, I spend my back at the end of the And so on some of the others. And so I don't think they're too far off the mark of that. People do work extended hours, they work one day next to like seven or eight. Yeah, I mean, they have to come back to <clears throat> I mean, Cheryl's here, but she has some easy stress. I don't think Dana hasn't gone back to the evening hours. She's actually been in in the afternoon, and his hours where he is now gives us more overlap in communication. So it's, really, it's better for us. <laughs> yeah, overlap. I think. Is it one less night of service for cleaning or anything like that? No. No. Yeah. Just trying to find a way to save it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Clean up after ourselves. <laughs> one one last time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm good with that too. That makes sense. Just checking again. All right. Yeah, so just about the Zoom, are you comfortable doing what we're doing? I think my own self about the opinion is I think it leave it up to the boards individually, I think, unless it gets really crazy. I think we're here, we're doing it, it seems to be working. So, but other boards want to make their own decision. I think they've been doing it quite a long. So, yeah. And they're limited in time, right? Because Zoom only goes to a certain amount of time. Is it about that time? Yeah, I think it's That's April right. next year. And, <clears throat> and they, the rumblings of it, they're considering changing it to not anything. Yeah, so I think the only board that's stuck with Zoom right now is the health board. That's the two Um Conservation's been conservation also. I mean, the options there are so long, so just Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's why they're there. So, yeah, that's what they are so not so take advantage, but use it while you can, and then yeah. you know, if it doesn't get elongated or changed, then go back to the first and stuff. So. Maria, is there anything else we should consider? Okay, good. All right, uh, next discussion. Anybody else out there have anything on the COVID issues? No. Um, discussion on the water rates and related matters. So I'm kind of bringing this up in a way on behalf of the advisory board. In a way, I'm not, I'm just bringing it up. But you know, the energy for came from the advisory board. They're concerned about the rate increase, significant rate increase that the just implemented, but she knew it was coming. Um, and um, so the advisory board is going to take that up. But three of the members are on the water system, and we need to put it out from the pursuit of something. Uh, so they can't take their hands with that. Um, so I said I would, I would raise the issue and see if there's anything that we want to do with it. So, um, in order to make our debt service payments and to pay for our operator, we recently enacted a rate increase, which the average increase would be about fifteen hundred dollars a year, making us the most expensive water district probably in the state. And you know that's based on our unique circumstances. We don't have any yeah. customers and we have a lot of expenses, and that's just how the math works out. <clears throat> and if you recall, a couple of years ago, before we put this to the voters. Advisory met with the water board and, and with this board and decided to come up with the, the plan of having the tax rates support 25% of the cost and the water rates support the rest. So that's what's getting you to $1,500 on average increase. <clears throat> Question is raised at the hearing when we did this well, what's going to happen to my rates? If a couple of people figure out that they can save money by building a well and they go off the system, well, we don't really have the answer to that. We don't have an easy way to get new customers for someone water. So that could happen. It's possible. And then so two or three people come off, the remaining people are going to have to have yet another rate. Right. So, I mean, I think one solution to this could be to revisit the, the, the 75 25 split. Town meeting approved the debt article as an exclusion. So you don't have to go back to town meeting for anything. You could just come up with a different plan. Right? You don't need town meeting approval to put to change the you don't need town meeting approval to put debt in the tax rate. If the debt's already been approved, you can take some amount of that debt and put that amount in the tax rate and then raise town meeting back every year. So for instance, if you were to go to 50 50, that would add about 19 cents to the tax rate. It would be about $90 impact to a typically assessed residential property. But it would save the water rate user about $500 on the fifth increase. So now I'm not looking for a decision tonight, but I just wanted to outline this a bit and take your temperature. Uh, see if you're interested in visiting this. And it makes it difficult as advisory to participate as a Group, yeah. Topic. So, you know, we, 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 
So way back when, and I know Bull is a term, when we do conversation with the boss, there was a discussion that was rather extensive about a better industry. So there was always talk about people saying, let's go my own well, and I'm going to get off the phone system, and I'm going to save the box. Now, Leah, you can type into this. There was a lot of discussion about where you can drill the well, because you've got to be so many feet from the septic tank, and some people don't qualify. But this betterment fee was, was discussed. You know, if that water line passes your property, and you can tell it's the right to assess the betterment fee, I, I, I think Mark the average is involved. Yeah. So you can only assess the betterment fee if it's a new service. So if that was the first time that they were having water in the other house, yeah, you can do that. You can assess the betterment fee. Since it's a replacement, yeah. it's so only one house we've added. You might be able to you might be able to break out <laughs> you might be able to break out the cost of a water tank and make an argument that you could assess some of that. Legal ramifications of what form of yeah. one of our water. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, if you remember when we did do this last two years ago, I did suggest the 50 50 then and went down to the 75 25. The reason I kind of went with that partially is because if we had 10 water users or a thousand water users, we still have the same debt because the, the, the state would have made us do it. Right. right. So, if there were 10 people, we'd still be separating. We wouldn't charge 10 people. You know, the town gets the benefit of the wall, right? Because of the school and like all the stuff like that that's on the town. That's, I know <clears throat> you also pay your own part of that rate, but everybody benefits from it. Yet, you know, 25% to throw a two million change on, you know, 100 people or 100 users. It's tough. And that's kind of why I, I thought from the beginning that, I, you know, I thought 25 wasn't enough, but that was <laughs> off my pay rate there. But, that's why I'm just thinking that, you know, and that's why I made that suggestion is that I just think that because the town is using the water and we would have had to do it anyway, we had no choice. That I thought that we should take more of that burden and spread it out among everyone, you know, and obviously I'm, you know, going to add my own tax rate to that as well because I'm not a water system. So, but I think that's the, the better route to go. And yes, as Ron said, there's, there, there are going to be people that can't get out of it because of their lot size, et cetera, et cetera. But if there are 10 that can, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt a lot of people. And on top of that, <clears throat> $1,500 increase for some people was more than their whole bill. Well, it was the previous year, yeah. right? So you're not just doubling their bill. <laughs> you're doubling it and change. So I just thought that that was, you know, a lot. And that's kind of why, you know, Brian and I talked about this as well. And I figured, I mean, maybe we could do other things that I don't know if Brian's bringing up that might help. <clears throat> Lower our costs overall, which can also help that. But you know, that's the operator. Yeah, that's the operator. Um, but so that that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you remind me of the number of users we have now? So that's households, and then what the average tax average tax bill as a whole is right now. One hundred and one. One hundred and one users. Yeah, yeah. one hundred and one users. And I have to go. That's yeah, the last two weeks. Yeah, so I think it's like if you did this, it would increase the typical tax bill from like 3,200 to 3,300 something. So, what's the average bill right now, like without any of these amendments or suggestions to the to what, 8,000? So, you'd be, so you'd be almost at 10,000 after it's all said and done. No, but, no, you're talking about 1,000. You're talking about the, the Sorry, we're talking about the average tax bill. Yeah, what, what, what's the family pay, yeah. pay yes. per year for water? Five thousand dollars. Uh, okay. Yeah. So the average before the increase was about uh, eleven hundred dollars. Okay. So, so twenty six hundred dollars per yeah. family theoretically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's more than fifty percent. Yeah. Um. So what, what would the process be to make that change? Would you have a great hearing or something? So I think you would, you would, you would let this, I think you would let this rate go. You would collect what you want to. Yeah. And then after this rate, if you were agreeable to do it, 
just, it depends whether you want to go back to town meeting and explain what you're doing, or if you just want to hold a hearing and announce what you're doing, get a cocktail level with it. Uh, if you want it to be effective for not this bill instead of the next one, you would want to address the issue when you set the tax rate. So when you set the tax rate, typically late October, November, after we get the data we need back from the state, that's when you would add this to the tax rate. What's their billing cycle? How do you, how do, you do that? So this is a not a well known fact, but you don't need town meeting approval to set the tax rate. And so you don't actually have to have any of your debt approved the town meeting. Your debt is your debt. And so you can take that amount of debt and raise it just by putting it on the tax rate. Yeah, what is that for Just that for him. There's rules with that. It's the only thing that you can do that if you don't need town meeting approval. Which would allow you to do this. If you wanted to, you could go back to town meeting, explain what you want, get everybody to buy into the idea, and then next year. Okay. But you could address it this year. The bigger the law is that it's not excluded. No, it's excluded. It's excluded. It's excluded. It's excluded. It's excluded. No, I have to have a ballot question. No, because it's, it's already been approved. It's through the debt that's been approved. Yeah, the amount is the amount that has to be paid. How do you get there? Yeah, the vehicle to get to the finish line doesn't matter. But yeah. is there any? Um, so I know we have like, five years to use our CARES Act money. Mm -hmm. Is there any offsets we can create under that umbrella? Not, not to pay the debt expense, but I think I'm asking how this works. But there's language in the bill that says you can extend utility fees to households that are. So perhaps as a long time it's a measure, yeah. I don't know what the criteria are that the households are not affected. But when we know that it's not going to go to each other in the households that are on the other system that then have to go through the That's a one time. So that's a one time. Thanks. Is it a one time per year? In the in the it definition of it five years and who cares that it's still only <laughs> five years though. But in five years we could also have an affordable housing. Project you know, theoretically that could be you could add five years or be on gamma. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Henri <laughs> version of yeah. COVID. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a it's an interesting topic, and it, that's a hefty <laughs> increase, I think, for folks. And I do remember the meetings I went back a few years ago, and I think I was on I was on advisory then and hesitant to say the town should take the responsibility. You know of the of the project because not everyone was getting the benefit you know directly from water but you do secondary you know, kids to schools Dunkin Donuts town hall etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, right so it's yeah it's something to probably revisit and think more about yeah I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to seriously thinking about it but it is a heck We're affecting uh, debt and we don't think about it. That's a third of it. Yeah, but it wasn't included as excluded debt. Right? Yeah, it was. Yes. You could actually take 100% of that debt and put it on the feedback sheet and raise it because it's excluded. It was the wording of the, yeah. the article. That, 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 that. So if it were excluded, you could still put it on the tax sheet. Do we happen to know how many water users could potentially, of course, and that's a loaded really question, potentially leave? You know, we have 101 users, are 20, 20, 20 of them going to walk off and drill their own well? And just to be aware of what the future holds here. I mean, people that have larger lot sizes. So there weren't that many that yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason I don't hold that. I mean, I that. They could do it, right? Yeah. We can look at it, but it's something more scientific. Yeah. Yeah. Just something to think about, right? Because 
by the theory is that they, they snowballed. Right? right. You get one or two, you end up with a little bit of stupid trend. Well, I say that in four years. So, hey, let's yeah. do it again. And yeah. just, just keep going, going. In the meantime, everyone else keeps going like this. Yeah. Right? So, you know, we have to address this. And if that happens, you have to address this in five years anyway. So, and, 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 you know, and then it's, you know, it's worse. And meanwhile, the way it bears it again. Because now they keep going. So, like I said, it just becomes a giant snowball, assuming. 20, 30 people can do it, you know, without actually knowing how far your something is or where the potential well is. Right. You know, and there's no way to action on this. So I talked about it before we had this um guy at the stop. Um, you know, about you know the cost, and it is about eight to twelve for an average well. Right. There can be complications, there can be shelves, there can be all these different things, but assuming eight to twelve, you know, well, you take that thing and you know. Five years, seven years, yeah, yeah. and then you're then you're free water. So it's it's definitely would be you know people will think about it, especially if, you know your neighbor does it, and then he only paid that much. Well, oh, I'm only right next door. But then you run into people in car over the field, four wells on his own property. <laughs> so you know it's it is this. I just I just don't think it. You know if we wait again, it gets uglier and uglier, and then people more and more people do it. And at this point, though, I mean, I can't see how it would get any more balanced than doing 50 50. No, I agree. You know, I mean, it's not all of a sudden that people who are not using the water on a daily basis are going to be, you know, I don't think we're going to make it a 25 75 split going the other way. No, no, 50 50 is what I thought. Time. Yeah. I'm still Yeah. <laughs> You're also just sort of shifting up for because those rate payers aren't saving all of it because it's moving over to their tax rate too. Yes. Right? Right. So they're still paying, it's just maybe reclassify how they pay some of it. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. yeah. So uh, I, I, I will allow us to turn 8 to 12K. Well, average. That's to get the well in the ground. And if you got to deal with if the water's hard, you get that soft. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's all those extra costs. costs. Actually, we have right a problem on. in town and it's about a five thousand dollar filter. Yeah. Yeah, I just you know, I was talking to Scott and saying you put it all in the account and cost twenty five. When all of a sudden that was like twenty five grand. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it did need needed two different water treatment systems and then it had to go to it was a deep well we had a hydro blast that you get through the shelf. You know, like so that's what I'm saying. Average is a thing, you're right? Someone says it's twenty five, but by the time you get there, it's already done for. And when you figure out, you don't know until you get the water that has to be yeah. the water. So, yes, that's what I'm saying. You might get people like, no, 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 no. but by then, you know, there are going to be others that it's not, and that's where it starts. But the, the water quality that we're putting out is exceptional, right? It's the little pH on it. The arsenic level is managed through the filtration system. It's got some KOH in it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all the there's a lot of advantages. The water advantages to stay yeah. on the pound system. Yeah. If you want to know how good it is, just ask Mr. Kimpton. He's always singing phrases about water quality. <laughs> okay. Well, we have time to think about this, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we're all certainly willing to consider it. See what. Maybe the best approach is. Well, you want to take a couple of weeks and think about it, but you know, the yeah. information yeah. will help you make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can well, I think put I think more together for you. I think we can put, put some thought into it and socialize it a little bit. Yeah. And socialize it with the water path as well. So you can be able to move through the decision making process. Figure out whatever is about it. I, well, it's expensive. And there are many people up and down nature that have spoken about the water in the day. So it is what it is. I don't know that the most expensive better house in this and then WRA is 13000 a year. No. I can find it more expensive than us. I was preparing for the rate here. And yeah. I had an old survey from that was three or four years old, and we were at $2,600 when we were at the road, we were there above all the other high mark expenses. But there's no minimum, right? And the consumption is there's a minimum uh rate that so tier one is ten thousand gallons per minute. Does advisory want a role in any of this the discussion side of things, Sarah? Uh, 
does advisory want more of a role in the discussion? I know they can't have some of their members participate. The problem is like three members, three members are legally conflicted out. Oh, so it's just so they just yeah. they don't have a quorum to talk about. One member of the board, uh, you know, brought it to our attention. Yeah. Um, you know, he he talked to his, his neighbors, and none of them were aware that it was going to be going up this much. And uh, you know, I think they're all cleaning. Well, geez, maybe we we'll, maybe we we'll won't put it. On. Yeah. But I, I can also remember Carl Huber telling about having three wells on his property, and between the three wells, he was getting you know less than two gallons a minute. So. Yeah. Uh, there's no guarantee that you spend the money for a well, you're going to get water even so. I have that issue. Our well is 1,200 feet deep, it's $17,000, and it's $1,500 a year to maintain it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and the electricity. And the electricity and the variable speed pump. So, I, so, so it's not free once you get the number. Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. And it hydrocracked at the bottom. Yeah, my message It's just a big lightning drive, which is wonderful. Yeah. The lightning will hit there and go down. Maybe you should keep going and see if you get anywhere. Yeah. I'll put it over. All right. So we will revisit this um, in a couple of weeks. Two weeks Okay. Um, next discussion regarding perambulation. Is it time to do that? Okay. We'll be Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what is it? Every five years, 10 years? Every five years, technically, you or someone you designate is supposed to go up and mark some of the border markers in town. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an old tradition from England that Massachusetts carried over. Yeah. Uh, I know you've done it in the past. Uh, it was just unclear to Brian and I whether really, it had been done since it would have been due probably around 2020 or so with the pandemic. We know we talked about it, but it's not been done since I've been on the board. And this is my um, in my sixth year. On the bonds? Yeah. One of the markers is over the middle of the pond. Exactly well, there were two, there were three markers that were a concern. It didn't happen while I was on the three list. I know we talked about it, but no one ever actually did it. We talked about it, and I went out and checked the ones along my side. Um, there's one near, there's the point that's right in the solar field off of Blood Street, yeah. but that's not yeah. there. There's one fur off of Lowell Street. Um, that has been, I guess the stone marker has been broken and it's not in the actual place. And then the one in the pond, but that is variable depending on where the water is from. I know the Boy Scouts have done the last time, there's a date on one of the tags on the town balance in my back board, basically. Um, the Boy Scouts went up to do it. I can go check the date on it, but I think it was like. 2012, 2014, maybe. Oh. Seems like that we've had the Boy Scouts go up and do it before, sort of a GPS. Is the one that's broken off the wall? I don't place? know where it is exactly. Unless you're like using historic funds for that would be the right way to. I don't know if it's actually an, an old stone marker or okay. a stone marker. I don't know. We do have a book with the coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. But the book was published sometime around early 1900s. And as Mr. King has noted, they unfortunately used things like near the stand of birch trees. Well, the birch trees are gone. It's 100 years later. So it's hard to find a lot of them. Um, but I know Mr. Cheney and Mr. Altrees here were pretty knowledgeable about them. Most of them are. And you can designate another party. So perhaps if the Boy Scout trip in town was willing to do it for you, you could officially designate. Um, it may be worth having a discussion with their leaders. I could also be like a restoration project in the 350th anniversary of the town, the sort of refurbishment of those bounds, and using CPC, CPA funds to do said project and making sure it's up to snuff for the next 350 years. Some may be hard, the one in the pond may be hard. Yeah, I mean, do the best we can, right? Put a bully. 
Yeah, I think there's actually a sign attached to it, if I remember well correctly, because it's on a sandbar, so there's like a sign for boats on it. Yeah. So when they do the drawdown in September, yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of rain this year, so people talk about it. Yeah. With GPJ coordinates, right? Just a side question. We had a GPS transponder. Do we still have that in the software there? I think Highway Department has that. I don't know what they're doing with it currently, but I know Highway Department has possession of that. It was an issue with the software, not the software. Yeah, it was a problem with the computer. The software was uh, on, and I don't know if that was ever rectified. Our tech company wasn't really up to the task of fixing that. We probably need to deal with the company that provides the software in order to get it onto a good computer working right now. But Tully has But Tully has uh, possession of both the computer with the software as well as the actual one. Yep. And the coordinates that we have are, have been translated into GPS coordinates? I don't know if they have. I know we have a book in the town safe that has all the coordinates, as it does all of the towns. It's one book they basically yes. produce for all the towns. Yes. Uh, yes. What about what's this precinct thing? A question came up because the clerk is working on the redistricting process and they talked to me last time about it. So I remember talking to you about it when I started, and I couldn't remember if you said they've been involved. Or no. So the answer is no, I don't think that. No. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's catch up with the Boy Scouts on uh, yeah. their interest level, maybe yeah. are co participating in a project and seeing yeah. CPAs, CPC, and have some money. I don't know if that's the right group to use or if it's just time. Well, what is, is there? That's definition wise. I'm pretty sure my parents think I need the boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's right. the And then a softball notice. Right. Right. So, like, <laughs> yeah, right. so for, for this, is there a letting out? Yeah. A document that needs to be submitted, or is it for how do we? I can go, I know where they are along the eastern side of the town. I'm not entirely clear what exactly is we need to provide for so much as I think it was just along the lines of us sending a memo over saying it was done. Okay, so that's what we're hoping for. But it has to be. Yeah, so that's something we'll need to determine along with everything else. But Cheney could do this for us. I could do it too. I know where a lot of them are. But those three that I don't know, maybe he, he does know. Um, but the one as far as that's in the solar fields off of Blanche Street, we'll have to get assistance from them to let us in there. And that, that one got removed. Well, and is. there's like a show, <laughs> was a stake put back or something. And there was that stake in there. <laughs> well, so that's, that's the one. They didn't know what it was. It just yeah. started to oh, yeah. get rock out of it. Yeah. Next time. So <laughs> it could be under a panel. You wouldn't know. But you know, I'd be happy to go do it in the fall when all the leaves are gone. I'm not doing it now. It's sort of good timing at the 350th anniversary of the town. Yeah. I think that maybe. But we need sidewalk to the town. I mean, it would be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, depends on the day. It's not it's super bubbly. Like, <laughs> Put on some later and go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we need to get it done, and then we will, basically. Okay, um, one more thing. We have minutes from August 17th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I read that. Look good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Um, anything else on your report, Brian? Just, uh, yeah, I lost my copy of the report. But anyway, uh, we are looking at the cost end of both the water operator, Groton, and Pepper, evaluating whether they can provide that service to us. Okay. Um, we think the resources we have in the budget now have to be an option. And, um, you know, if not, we'll see if we can craft a job description to, to hire a position. Okay. Right now, this contract up to Swiss. Yeah. Are they, that, are they, well, that ends at the end of the year, and they, the calendar year. And they expressed an interest in this. I think they would like to take some more. I think we've been frustrated with Swiss at times. Yeah. So I, I just, see if there's a better option. 
Kepler is always interested in what it's in a discussion that kind of went in a different direction to us when we talk about discussion. So, you know, we opened it as one of the matters. Yeah, so the thirteen project is is on track. The order of taking has been recorded. People are starting to make extra checks, and uh, the DOT is on track to have this out the data on September eleventh. Cool. Thanks. And you got an update about Trinity as well. So yeah, we got um, we're going to get the reporting that we asked for on Trinity, and uh, they. They're not willing to provide us any hours for free to station in emergency, but they gave us a rate, I think, of 155 an hour. So if we want to, you know, if we need to get you strong coming if we want to them here in town, you know, that's what the cost would be. Okay. Is that, that's pretty normal, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah that's an annual school. Okay. Affordable okay. Housing Committee met recently to yeah. system for RFP. Yeah, so I think I think they're off to a good start with the new work. Okay. We'll have a good discussion uh, next week, and I think again at the end of September, and we'll nail down the significant points that we decide on. It was pretty. The consultants group was good, and I think the, the committee as a whole was fairly receptive to their ideas. Mm -hmm. um, the one sort of drawback was it's, it's a long time to to get to thinking there's a foundation in the ground. Yeah. I think there was hope. That it would be a lot shorter, you know, 18 months, 20 months. But in reality, it's probably closer to three and a half years before you even have a foundation. Okay. And that would have been the case for that. I, I, you know, if it was privately funded, then, then you know, the, the previous, you know, side of things was a privately funded, yeah. you know, number. So they could do it at a lot quicker pace. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're going through a not private funds, you don't do state funds, it yeah. elongates the process. Um, but doesn't give you a moratorium against other projects. So you can still have other projects coming at you, yeah. despite of you having them. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> that might not be good. Yeah, <laughs> not likely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have that note I gave you? I thought I wrote a report. I, but overall, that group was uh, was willing to take that consultant's feedback and work with them, and I you know, found myself intrigued by the way they had been so far. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I was going to mention was like the bylaws that they approved by the review. Oh, oh. So if you saw that, yeah, uh, they rejected the growth permit communication bylaw. Did they reject it completely, or just? Yeah, they they if you read the memo, they put a lot of mess in that. Yeah, after that. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> they basically said you can't use this as a tool to stop growth without having a legitimate planning process and tying the legitimate planning process to the need to have a thing, et cetera. So, yeah, you have, to, it's, you have to figure out what problem you have to justify to meet the moratorium. So, it's the problem. So the town of Brookline, New Hampshire district, has a moratorium in place on new building lots being created, but I think that had been previously approved. I'm not sure. I think they stems from too many people in the town and the school in fact. But I don't know if that's a why I don't totally understand it, it's just what I've heard. It's feedback. they're going by Massachusetts case law. Yeah, so through the citations they're talking about Massachusetts yeah. specific opportunity. I mean, it's something you can revisit. It's just not going to be. You're not going to call the age of the Yeah. There's another one too. The other one that got shot down was well, partially approved was the the advisory bylaw. Oh right, right. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Um, I think we knew that they might say that because the law on finance committees says that you can't do what you're trying to do. There was no law that spelled out what we were trying to do as a part of the advisory board. Okay. They're taking the, advice, the finance board statute saying this applies to the situation and everybody has to change it. Let's see if we can change it. Okay. All right. And then I want to add on my favorite subject, Sheila Hamilton. Oh, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. she can't come on the 18th. No, she, she can come on the 14th. And yeah. everybody can be here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I thought we had to school. So I did. I changed my flight to be here, to be back here in the morning at the 14th. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be here. Yeah. I'll be home before. I would like, I would like to participate in that discussion. Okay. So we're we going back with the 28th, I think. That. What do you mean? <laughs> also, I should mention. No, wait. Can, can, I'm sorry. Can we make that work? It's September 28th. I don't know if she can make it now, but. Well, there were two days that were going around. Well, it was going to be tonight. Yeah, it's going to be the 31st of the. Or the 14th. Originally, it's the 31st and the 14th. And then people were jumping ship on the 14th. So we said September 28th. And then the plans, plans change. So we just say, Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. I don't have a job. Right. Well, then you got to look at your next meeting is September 28th. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in on the 28th. I'm on the 24th. It's more of a meeting. Out of order, and have her here for the business day. I don't know if we can make it a 10 o'clock in the morning meeting and have her, you know, it doesn't have to be in a selection meeting. You can post the meeting yeah. and invite her to the meeting. It can be during the business day. Yeah. And so I'm just, I just, I, I, I've been passionate. I've been to the state house three times. We got we to gotta get her to these meetings. And she's trying to come down with but she realizes it's not. I want to be involved in the discussion. So, so and so I should also. She didn't see you know, but she never saw it the town clerk. Yeah, I saw that until last week. Yes, even though it had been submitted to her one month ago. She said she missed it. She said she wasn't or something. She got it. And she remembered later that she did get it. And that's not that, 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 you know, that's to my point here. She wanted to have her here. And you know, high grades is here all the time. High grades is here so much so you wanted to get rid of it. But nonetheless, you <laughs> still and he was here to talk to us. He came to think from me. He came to select the meetings. And, you know, he, he just, this is what the guy did. She's done none of that. And he, this, this thing across the street from the, the church has been nothing but a problem. This, I read that email from the town clerk, and you write your comment on it. It's almost funny. It is funny. It's stupid. <laughs> you know, you've got to have some level of accountability. And I've been to the state house twice, and I've been to the there. You know, the state house is closed, and I have a special exemption, and I have no selection clause, and I can work and get in. <laughs> and I couldn't go in to see her, so she needs to come here. She needs to come here every six months, and she's out of that. And all this stuff is nothing but a fiasco. She's saying, I don't have that. I don't have this. She didn't give me this thing about the church. She handed it to her. I was there. I said, I have been say no. I, well, I had a conversation with her a month ago about the kind of great legislation. We had a meaningful conversation about it. And then, like, can I talk to her last Thursday? She's like, what are you talking about? Oh, good. I don't know. Last three months? I, um, I want to be involved in that, that discussion. It's just. This is this is not easy. This stuff, this the liquor license has been for four years. You're just getting started. Yeah, we just I, oh yeah, that I forgot about it. I'll get to tomorrow. All and right, because there's no accountability to what's going on. Okay, I mean, I would ask to be involved in this. Okay, moving on to the 28th. We'll see if she's available. Let's we'll see. If the 28th doesn't work, I'll do a little something and we'll see if we get something during the day. So, the, the morning of the 14th, I can make it happen. Is that going back to the 13th? I have jury duty. What time are you leaving? I have jury duty. Oh, they'll never call you in. You're fine. I still have to try to frame it now. So. Yeah. Uh, mind you, in Uber in November. So. Uh, <laughs> next week is the week of the 6th. You know what? I'm leaving tomorrow for the 11th. Oh, I would just do this sooner rather than later. And don't come back on the night meeting to take your place. Yeah, no. Well, I'm going to I can be available during the day. I don't know when you're available. If you just give me a day or two notice, I can make it up. I can find out when she's available sometime after September 11th. When are you, are right, you leaving the 14th and when are you coming back? 
16th. All right, let me run the code. So sometime after the 16th. Okay. Joan, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, the uh, town charter, is that up on the website yet? I don't the draft? Um, I don't think it's up there yet. I think we have a meeting coming up in the next few days to yeah. hopefully get to that point. Hopefully. What was that? I don't think the, the I don't think it's on the website yet because the current draft doesn't reflect yeah. the committee's thinking. Yeah, they we have, haven't they haven't made decisions to say this is what they want the charter to say for the draft. So yeah, we have a meeting on the sixteenth. Okay, so possibly after that. Yeah. Hopefully, we we kind of go around in circles again. So. <laughs> I it's been a case. very long, arduous, frustrating process, and sometimes we take two steps forward and then take a step back. So, um, so no one can accuse us of not thinking about this enough because we are absolutely thinking about this a lot from many, many different angles, and Chief Dow can attest to that. Um, yep. We're all kind of pulling our hair out at some point, probably especially Ryan and Kevin, because they have to listen to us go back and forth. And well, now that they're in person, we have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. Well, two hours and not quite back. Yeah. So you're welcome to join on the 16th. Well, I just uh, I don't want to miss it. I want to. Uh, I want to have uh, time to take a look at it. Sure. And uh, is this now that we won't uh, be seeing anything about this in the fall, right? It'll no. Be, uh, spring town meeting. If, uh, spring if would be the soonest that it would be even brought to the floor. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so if there's nothing else, then we're going to close the public hearing, the public meeting, and we will then enter into executive session. So thank you all. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Nice yeah. To see you guys. yeah, thank you. Good luck. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.